In order to use these Fourier descriptors for recognition, we want to make them invariant to transformations like translation, uh, changes in scale, and rotation. An example might be uh, if you wanted to recognize these leaves in an image uh, given some template training images, um, you can see the scale varies, the rotation varies, and position, of course. So that's actually fairly easy to do with these Fourier descriptors. Um, we're going to actually look at, uh, like I said, rotation, translation, scaling. We also actually have to consider the starting point of the sequence, the first point that we choose along the border, because that will change the uh, Fourier descriptors. So all of these, though, result in simple transformations of the Fourier descriptors. First of all, rotation of the contour is equivalent to multiplying the Fourier transform by e to the j theta. Translating the contour just affects the zero coefficient, because remember, that's just the centroid. Scaling the contour is just equivalent to multiplying the Fourier descriptors by that scaling factor. And changing the starting point of the sequence to, instead of point zero to point k, is equivalent to multiplying the transform by this number here. So we can normalize a Fourier descriptor vector for these transformations. Um, we'll set the zeroth descriptor to zero. So that basically uh, zeroes out the translation and puts the centroid at the origin. Next, we'll uh, divide through by the magnitude of the, um, the first Fourier descriptor, a of 1, and that will normalize for scale. We can also normalize with respect to rotation and starting point. That's a little more complicated because there, it's a pair of unknowns that we have to solve for, but it can be done. Um, in this lecture, though, I'm just going to show a very simple way to uh, handle those transformations, which is just to discard the phase information. So all a rotation does is it changes the phase of the Fourier descriptors. And similarly, for the starting point, it just changes the phase. So if we just discard the phase of the Fourier descriptors and just take the magnitudes, namely the spectrum, um, and use that as our feature vector, uh, that should be invariant. It does. It's not ideal, of course, because we are losing information. Like different shapes can have the same spectrum if we discard the phase. So let's take an example. Let's do a little experiment where we take one of those tool images. Um, again, we'll we'll extract the Fourier descriptors. Now we're going to normalize for translation and scale. So we'll zero out the first coefficient and we'll divide through by the, the magnitude of the second coefficient. Next, what we'll do is we'll take that same image and we'll randomly scale and rotate it. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll, we'll extract the boundary of that second image, um, normalize it for scale and um, translation. And then what we'll do is just compare the uh, magnitudes of those two Fourier descriptors. So let me pull that up here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and run that. So what I have is the this, um, I'm sorry, I have this image. I've uh, randomly translated and rotated the image, as you can see here. I've extracted the two Fourier descriptor vectors, and here I'm plotting those two on top of each other, just the magnitudes of each coefficient. So as you can see, they're very similar. Okay, so then what I'll do is I'll, I'll instead of comparing an image to a scaled and rotated version of itself, I'll compare it to a different image. And that's what I have here. So this is um, a second image. So I'm comparing the Fourier descriptors from this first tool to the Fourier descriptors of the second tool. And as you can see here, those two sets of Fourier descriptors are very different in some places. So that would be enough to distinguish those two shapes. 
Okay, so now let's move on to regional representations. So we've looked at boundary representation, now we'll look at properties of regions. So we'll use two methods to do that. One is statistical moments and the other is texture measures. First, statistical moments. So we have a shape like this, a segmented region, and we can compute a moment of that shape by raising x and y to powers p and q and multiplying by the, the value um, of that corresponding point, which is just a 1 if we have a binary region. So if we take the 0, 0 moment, um, then I just am adding up all the values within that region, namely the area. Um, if I take the first x moment divided by the area, of course that's just the centroid in x and the average value of y or centroid in y. We can um, compute um, more invariant moments by, first of all, we can subtract off the mean, so these are called central moments. We subtract off the mean x and the mean y and raise those to the powers p and q. And we can also uh, normalize by scale by dividing by the area. So um, I can uh, scale essentially the central moment by the area as shown here. So using these, um, we can compute things like the principal axes. So putting these central moments into a 2 by 2 matrix, um, u sub 0, u sub 1, 1, etc. The eigenvalues are the lengths of the principal axes and the eigenvectors, which are these uh, columns, are the um, directions of the principal axes. And um, MATLAB's region props computes these. Here's how to do that in MATLAB. Um, here I have a tool I've extracted um, the region properties using region props. I can show the bounding box. The centroid uh, gives you major, major axis length, minor axis length, and orientation, and also the convex hull. So here is this. Okay, so this is the um, bounding box of that region. This is the uh, major and minor axes centered at the um, centroid. And this is the convex hull as shown here. Um, we can even do better making these even more invariant by um, taking combinations as shown here. So these moments are invariant to translation, scale, and rotation. So we have seven moments, rate, I guess up to power three, so eta sub zero three, um, and we have, we have seven of those. So this shows an example image. Here we're not using a binary image, we're using a, a grayscale image, but we're still computing moments of that uh, region. So what they've done is they've um, translated that region, changed the scale, uh, flipped it, taken a mirror image of it, and rotated it. And here are the seven invariant moments for each of those images. And as you can see, um, the values are almost the same for each moment. So phi sub 1 is pretty much 2.866 all the way across. Same for phi sub 2, phi sub 3. The only one that isn't uh, invariant is phi sub 7, and that is different for this mirrored image as shown here. So it's, it's instead of a minus 20, it's a plus 20. So basically, these moment invariants are not invariant to mirroring, just for translation, scale, and rotation. Uh, let's look at another um, way to describe regions, and that's based on texture. Uh, texture is an important cue for recognition. Um, 
an example of a natural scene like this, a dirt road, you know, humans can pretty easily see the difference between um, this region and this region based on texture. So one obviously is a dirt road, the other is grass. Um, here's some texture images from a uh, texture photo album. And what we'll see is that we can look at statistical ways of describing texture, structural ways, or spectral ways. So first, uh, let's look at statistical descriptions. So we can take the mean of a region, the variance in the higher order moments, as we've seen. We can also compute some derived values, such as this R value, which is just used as the, uh, the variance of the region. So this value should have zero for uniform areas and one for areas with large variation. This uh, derived value called uniformity uh, sums the probability squared of each uh, intensity value in the region. And the entropy, of course, is just the probability of each um, intensity value times the log of that probability. So here's an example of three uh, image regions, a uniform region, a coarse texture, and a kind of a regular texture here. So the, those values that we just looked at are shown for those three regions. Um, let's see, the standard deviation is highest for the coarse texture and lowest for the smooth texture. Um, let's see, we also have uh, similarly properties for uniformity and entropy.